ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Lindsay Cermak. <laughs> Lindsay comes to us. That's very slow. <laughs> very dramatic. Um, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where she works for the Minnesota Literacy Council, where she joined as an AmeriCorps VISTA in 2010. Um, she's a GED instructor and a program coordinator for the Open Door Learning Center, Northside. Uh, she is part of a team that develops instructional materials and does professional development across the state. And for each of the speakers, I'm going to give you a little intro, but also three statements about them. Two of which are true, one of which is false. You will have to decide which is which. You can talk to them later um, if you so choose. So here are Lindsay's three statements. Lindsay has been to Jamaica three times in less than two years doing mission work. Her goal is to skydive at least one time in her life. <laughs> and she puts peanut butter in her cereal. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so yes, I am Lindsay Sarmack, and I'm going to be talking about taking the pressure off to take the pressure off. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about my classroom and then talk about a revelation that I've had recently. So I am a GED teacher. I teach all four subjects of the GED. I have both pre-GED and GED level students in my classroom, very multi-level, and it is ma the majority of the time we are doing um, things in a classroom setting. I am huge on community and building relationships with my students, getting to know them, talking with them both inside and outside of the classroom. At the same time, I do hold my students to a high standard, and I push them and stretch them. Before I continue, I'm going to be using the word fail a lot in my presentation, because it's part of my revelation. I just, so there, there may be a negative connotation about how people think of that word, but I just want us to think about it in this way, not getting the desired result. I teach, I have taught primarily American-born students, and with that, they are more likely to come through my door with negative experiences of previous schooling. But regardless of the background of students, I think we can all relate that a lot of them literally come in with pressure to not fail, whether that's in school, when they're in their family relationships, as a parent, socially, whatever it might be. I had a student who she would make appointments with me to test, via whether, whether it was state testing or GED testing, practice tests, and she w when the day came for her to test, she just would be a no-show. And once it became a pattern, I asked her what was going on, and she told me she was incredibly scared to fail. The anxiety was so bad, she would just not come to school that day. I have another student who I was working with her, and she was literally doing this while we were doing math problems, and I stopped her, not exaggerating, and I stopped her, and I was like, are you okay? And she said that she had had negative experiences, traumatic experiences with math of when she got the answer wrong when she was young, her dad would just yell at her. And so her body developed that response. Another student, very similar, being yelled at, being belittled from a young age when, because she didn't know math. I had another student recently take an, a GED test and she didn't pass. She went home, told her sister that she failed the test and her sister looked at her and said, oh, we don't do that. Another student, he literally just carries anxiety in his body about a lot of stuff. And so I gave him a homework assignment. I said, I want you to go home. I want you to write for me what your biggest fear is and what would be the worst thing that would happen if it came true. The next day, he came back and he told me his biggest fear was of achieving, of success, because he knew socially people would look at him and say, oh, you think you're better now that you have your GED? Mm -hmm. So all these things, pressure, right? And a lot of our students suffer from math anxiety. They just want to know, did I get the answer right? They don't care about the process. My end of things, I was trying to be the perfect teacher. Oh, I put so much pressure on myself. So you think of the GED test, you think all four subjects that I'm teaching, you think of the different levels in my classroom, people are stopping and starting, the skill gap between what they know, what they need to know. And I was putting this pressure on myself to get everything perfect. And what I was doing was constantly feeling like I was failing. I was not measuring up. It didn't matter if people told me that I was a good teacher or not. So much of me did not believe them because I constantly was just trying to be perfect. Last disclaimer, I think we should all strive for excellence, so I'm not talking about that when I'm going to talk about pulling back a little bit. We should all strive to be excellent because our, our students deserve our excellent work. But perfection, striving for perfection, is that unfair pressure we put on ourselves to not make mistakes. So in my personal life recently, I had this revelation 
where this chain, this bond of perfection was literally just broken because how I was in the, in the classroom was not too much different than how I was in real life. And so once that happened, I went back to the classroom and I literally could see something I didn't see before. And I told you, I pride myself on the fact that I have relationships with my students and I felt like I was very in tune. But there was something that I didn't see and I saw the pressure my students felt to not fail me. They didn't want to fail me and I didn't see that before. So I'm trying not to fail them, they're trying not to fail me. And so with this, I realized I was not preparing my students and teaching them how to fail and get back up. I would nurture them, I would encourage them, I would coach them, I would help them when it happened, but I wasn't preparing them being proactive about building their character in that way so that they could self-manage if it happened. So I decided to be intentional about being more vulnerable in front of my students. I thought I already was, but it, I wanted to go deeper. I needed to go deeper. So one example of that, we were going over a problem Two questions, very similar, but distinct questions, and it was important. We were, they had already talked about them in groups. We were going to report back. I was recording on the board. We were going over the first question, and they were giving me answers I was recording. I didn't notice that they were giving me answers to the second question, and so they were getting intermingled on the board. Once I realized it, it was too late, and I was like thinking to myself, oh, crap. Like, I didn't catch it, right? But it was a very important thing for us to distinguish. So we went back, looked at the keywords, looked at, we separated it out, distinguished between the two on the board, and instead of me pretending like that was what I planned to do the whole time, and that was just an instructional move right there, um, I just looked at them and I was like, guys, you know that I did not catch that we were answering both questions the first time, right? And they looked at me and they were like, no, you didn't. And the look in one lady's face, I can't even describe to you everything that was in her face, but one of the words I can tell you, she just looked at me, smiled, there was a twinkle in her eye, and it was just a little relief. Like, oh, she didn't get it. You know, she missed something. So a lot of learning came from that. So the culture in my classroom is changing. More people are taking tests, more people are passing tests. But there's also people taking tests and stepping out and not passing. And before, where that would have been just like the end of the road and, oh, I shouldn't be doing this, I, you know, I'm not smart anyway, and, and kind of having me needing to pick them back up, their language is starting to change. Before I even give my opinion about things, if they do, take a test and not pass it, they're saying things like, oh, well, that was a good experience. Or, oh, I le I, I, I just know, at least I know what I need to work on now. I just need to work on a little bit of this. And so that is really powerful for me. And I realized that I was literally, I was standing in my students' way. They would take practice tests. They'd be close to passing. They'd be almost passing. Or they would pass, um, but just pass. But I wouldn't encourage them to try it because I I was scared of their reaction. I was scared that they were going to give up if they didn't pass the real thing. And so I was enabling them. I wasn't empowering them. I wasn't building that character in them to step out and try. So this process got me thinking that this is a big deal. And so these are some questions that I have. Are we scared to be vulnerable with our students? And I mean like really vulnerable, right? Like going the next, the deeper level. Be you. Be real with your students. We say making mistakes is a good thing. I said that. But do we authentically model it, right? And not all the contrived examples, but just you mess up, literally say it. Are we teaching our students how to frame failure with proper perspective? Do they know that we don't know everything? Do they know that they don't have to know everything to be successful, right? <clears throat> So let's make our classrooms places to authentically practice succeeding and failing. Let's think about and write down expectations we have of ourselves. It, it may not be perfection with you, but what, what expectations we have of ourselves can easily carry over into the expectations we have of our students. And then let's start ongoing conversations with our students around fear and success and failure and their implications. I've done this a lot recently and that is really helping and they're helping each other. They're talking about it with each other now. Once you name a fear, it loses its power to paralyze you. So let's be honest with ourselves. Do we perpetuate the fears that our students have or do we empower them to overcome them? My students don't need me to be a perfect teacher they need me to step out. They need me to be confident no matter what the result is. So my last question is by 
trying to be perfect teachers, do we unknowingly perpetuate the pressure our students feel to be perfect students? Thank you.